What an update. Version 4 is fantastic. The kind of app we should be seeing in 2020. Hey guys, it's Rob Sipek with Paperless X, a channel that is all about digital productivity. If you're new to my channel, hello. Make sure you subscribe if you're looking for solutions to go paperless with your work, studies, or business. And if you're already subscribed, make sure you turn on your notifications so you know each time we release new videos. Liquid Text just released a Windows version of their app. Their Mac version is set for releasing during the third week of this month, according to the information published on their website. Liquid Text will launch backup and syncing services this summer, fall, depending on what part of the world you're in. I guess now that they have PC versions, they see the importance of backup and syncing. You can import documents into Liquid Text from your files, a website, or photos. Make sure your website has fully loaded before importing it. Whichever file type you choose, Liquid Text will open it on this revamped workspace. Your workspace has two columns, which you can resize and switch as you please. Because I'm right-handed, I have my documents on the left and my canvas on the right. You can also move your documents to the bottom if you prefer that. This setup works better when your iPad is in portrait mode, but for those of you that want to do documents on the side in portrait mode, you can now do that in liquid text. When you split view the application with another app, your writing canvas automatically goes down to the bottom with all your documents above it if you've set your application to change its layout automatically. Otherwise, if your layout is fixed, for example, if you have a vertical layout or if you have a horizontal layout, the split view will not affect your application layout anymore. You can now customize your canvas. The default setting is the one that's always been in liquid text, the dotted one. Hopefully in the future, we'll be able to set our default settings. For now, it seems you have to customize every workspace you create. You can pick your grid pattern from these dotted grid ruled, a plain template, something for everyone. You can choose the size of each page on your canvas. The canvas in liquid text is infinite, but it consists of fixed paper sizes put together, each with a unique color. That was the setup they had before. Those small pages that make up the massive canvas are the ones whose size you can now decide. I don't understand any of these dimensions. I have never used them in my life, but I think the letter paper size is closest to A4. At least now we know the paper sizes we're actually using in the application. You can decide whether your papers are portrait or landscape. You can choose the border thickness to help you know where each page ends. The thicker the border, the easier it is for you to tell your pages apart. You can choose the border color, your background color, you have the option to have one color for your whole canvas. If you don't like the varying shades, turn this option off and your entire canvas will have one color. These different shades, they help differentiate your individual pages. Now that we can thicken our border, it really doesn't make any sense to have different shades on your canvas. You can choose your line spacing. It's probably in millimeters. The application doesn't say. You have to try out different ones to see which one works for you. 25 to 26 seems to work for me. And finally, you can choose the grid color. When you finish, tap done on the top right corner to effect the changes. Otherwise, the changes you just made will not be applied to your canvas. Now that we can choose our page sizes, a zoom percentage display on the screen will make our lives easier. The good thing with liquid text is that your zoom percentage doesn't change when you adjust your columns, when you adjust your split windows. It is crucial if you want to keep your handwriting uniform as you adjust your split view ratios. So no matter how tiny you make your split view for your writing, liquid text will not alter the zoom, which is very, very useful. On the dock pane, you can add as many resources as you want in your workspace. You can add them from the application, which is the liquid text files, from files, from an online website, or from your photos. For your photos, you can add all of them in one document. Simply keep adding as many images as you need. And the application will create one document from all those photos.
the doc pane shows all the documents in your application. You can switch between them as you need. You can only open a maximum of three documents if you wanted to compare your PDFs. To add a document to your workspace, simply drag and drop it where you want it. You can do that to replace materials too. If your document has a contents page, you can access it under outline. At first, the application seemed to handle massive files well. It was loading in fractions of a second. The application speed seemed to have improved, but that quickly changed after I created some notes in the application. The lag in the previous version and the slow document loading times still plague this application. And that's really sad to see. One of you guys mentioned that the speeds had improved, but unfortunately, I'm not seeing that. If it's a bug, that will be quite a relief, but if it's still plaguing everyone, then this is sad to see. You can collapse this dock pane, hide it from your workspace so you have more screen real estate to work. The application now has three toolbars, one top toolbar, two sidebars. The left one is for the dock pane, while the right one is for the canvas. These are mobile though. You can move them around, around your workspace or even exchange their location. Your annotation tools are now at the top of the application. Perhaps they could give us the option to pick which we prefer. The text tool allows you to select text in your PDF. You have options to comment, select more and add tags. Define and copy the selection. You can now add initials to your comments, separate them from the comment itself using a comma. This is useful if you're working on the same document with a lot of people. Signing your initials is a way to see who made what comments. You can tag your PDF, handy for research and cataloging information. You can create tags based on anything. Questions you want to ask. Authors in your write-up, for example. Tags can help you organize your thoughts as you go through a document. Your tags have categories, names, and colors. This one extract anything out of the PDF, but it will create bookmarks on your PDF. You can write comments and annotations on the PDFs, or you can write them on the canvas, but link them to the part of the PDF you are referring. There is not enough space on the PDF itself. The application doesn't allow you to expand the sizes or the pages of your PDF. This feature allows you to create notes on the side, but keep a link to the place you found the information. In case you want to go back and verify something, this is very useful. You can also use the pen tool to extract data from the PDF. Liquid Text has the most accurate presentation of my handwriting I have seen in any app since I went paperless. It is very impressive and exciting considering this is a PDF reader and not a note-taking application. Random thought. PDF readers and note-taking applications, the line separating them is becoming blurry the more updates we get from the different applications. And this is very interesting. Um, I wonder if we'll ever get to a point where all PDF readers are effectively note-taking applications and all note-taking applications are effectively PDF readers. You get a ballpoint and calligraphy pen. These are slightly different, but the differences are negligible. When you turn on pressure sensitivity, you might be able to find one that you prefer. When pressure sensitivity is turned off, however, they look and feel exactly the same. If you've noticed any noticeable differences between these two inking tools, please let me know in the comment section down below. The pen tool has a freehand type for handwriting your annotations and it has a straight one for underlining and drawing straight lines. Technically, this will draw shapes for you, except for circles, but the experience is quite unpleasant. The pen comes with 8 fixed sizes and 17 colors. You can replace these using one of these 31 preset colors. Simply drag a color to replace one of these favorite ones. If there's one that you like that's not already in your favorite palette. I doubt any of us would need this many colors for annotating PDFs. In Liquid Text, all the ideas are linked. Your extractions remain connected to the documents. Your comments are linked to what you're commenting on. Liquid Text shines in this linking department. You can connect all your ideas, no matter where you put them on the canvas. This is very, very useful, especially for someone who always needs to go back and refer to the PDF from their notes. The highlighter looks better on PDFs than it does on the canvas. It looks awful on the canvas.
you get a free hand one and a straight one as you do for your pen tool. Obviously, the straight one is for neater highlighting. It has the same number of colors as the pen tool, but only six sizes. The eraser in the application erases per pixel. The lasso tool selects everything on the page. You can thus move items around to create space in your notes. You can't create space between your notes using the lasso tool. This has become a feature that most people are very interested in. In liquid text, however, you can write in any direction, even beyond the canvas. Creating space in liquid text is not a problem at all. In case you want to add something 20 years later, you can still find a space to do it. You can add sticky notes to your canvas. You can type your note or add handwritten notes to them. A text box is different from a sticky note in that it doesn't have a background. I love the shadows your sticky notes have. Locking things you add to your canvas can be really useful, especially for liquid text. I've encountered a problem where they move around when I press my hand on the screen. It's uncomfortable moving them back in place or undoing the unwanted relocation. Sometimes if you have a lot of notes and you have things that are really close together, you can cover some important information by a small, a tiny movement. You can drag and drop things into liquid text, but you can't pull them out of the application. Who else thinks it's essential to have the ability to drag snippets out of PDFs? The application gives you some options to customize your double tap shortcuts for your second generation Apple Pencil. While searching, you have the option to search through your visible documents, which are these three documents that I have open right now. Or you can search all the documents in your project and you see which ones have the word you are seeking. You can then pinch your document to see all the pages containing the term you just searched for. It saves you scrolling through the whole document to find what you're looking for. Searching your workspace is more fun because the searched terms are easy to find because they pop out of the page and the navigation animation is a bit exciting. However, please note that Liquid Text does not have handwriting recognition. It does not search through your handwriting. Tags are difficult to search in the application. We've not been able to figure out how to find tagged information in the application. There is no point tagging things if you can't search for them later or if you can't find them later. At this point, we are not sure if this is a bug or the feature is still incomplete. Searching for tags for tagged notes should be as easy as creating the tags themselves. And we've also noticed that tags seem to be only available per workspace so you have to create tags for each workspace and tags that you appear in one workspace don't appear in another workspace yeah that definitely needs improvement because you can't be creating tags for every workspace the application should have a way to have universal tags for all the documents you work on in the application if this 350 megabyte workspace takes long to save changes and it takes long to load searching through through the workspace crashed the application almost every single search attempt we tried and the app freezes while searching making it difficult to cancel a search inquiry. I was planning to move back to liquid text but it's still a bit buggy so I shan't be doing that. You can share different formats of your notes with others. The liquid text file format only opens in liquid text. It is therefore ideal for sharing with other liquid text users or for backing up when they finally have that in the application. You can export a PDF copy of your documents and or notes. Exporting your workspace gives you a few options to choose from depending on what you want to do with the documents. Due to the nature of the workspace in liquid text, how you export your notes is very important which we do not recommend. You can fit all the pages on one column or separate your pages according to rows and columns. This is the option that will export individual pages for you. This will be the best way to export out of liquid text. And now the application offers you hyperlinks if you export the documents too. But liquid text is designed to work on PDFs and keep them in the application. Exporting out of liquid text is tedious. Documents viewed in liquid text are better off staying in liquid text. 
When you export documents out of Liquid Text, the application merges them to be one document, which isn't always ideal. If you have two documents, chances are you want to export them as separate documents. The application does not give you that option. Looking on the bright side though, the application can export outlines and hyperlinks in the PDFs that do have them. If you choose to export each individual PDF out of Liquid Text, it will retain its outlines and hyperlinks. You can also export notes, outlines, depending on how much information you want your final export to have. You can select how the final document looks from these options. Most people find it useful to export highlights only and the application offers you that. Unfortunately, the application doesn't have the option to export pages with highlights on them. You can edit these before you export them out of the application. Lastly, you have the option to update the original document you uploaded. If your document came from, say, OneDrive, you can save these changes you put in the application back to the OneDrive copy. Very handy if you want all your annotations saved permanently to your PDFs, which saves you a lot of time trying to organize and keeping copies of the same document. The home page has two columns. The left column is for opening documents into the application. The right column contains your files in the application. Liquid Text allows you to create folders within folders, which is most people's preferred way of organization. When you're importing files into the application, the imported file is added to the folder you currently have open. Always remember to open the folder you want your imports to go to before you start importing files. Otherwise, you can quickly lose track of where your files are in the app if you're not paying attention. You have two main ways to arrange your documents in Liquid Text. You have individual documents in folders or you can have projects. Each organization option has advantages and disadvantages, but generally Liquid Text has to work on its organization system because neither possibilities are ideal for users. One creates duplicates of the documents across multiple workspaces, taking up a lot of storage on your iPad. The other one saves space on your iPad, but lets you create huge notes on Canvas. You can edit your documents. When you select some documents, you get the option to export, delete, or move those documents. Liquid Text permanently deletes all documents from your application. There is no way to recover your documents once you've deleted them. And in 2020, this is unacceptable. A recycle bin is a must have for any document managing or document creating, document annotating application. You can arrange your documents according to name or date. You can view them as lists or thumbnails. And you can add new folders or search documents in the app. You can search a word and it will show you all the documents that contain that particular word you're searching for. It does this in milliseconds, which is very impressive. Overall, a fantastic update, but still a bit buggy. There remains some critical issues that our developers haven't yet addressed. Which update excited you the most? And let me know if you're experiencing the bugs that we are having on our application. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Let me know what you guys think about Liquid Text version 4 in the comment section down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you in the next video.